uh, the Super Bowl and impeachment. Back-to-back -back entertainment. Yeah. Well, this past Super Bowl certainly was historic. Now, I am not a Tom Brady fan, not on any level. But you have got to give this guy his props. He leaves the New England Patriots, where he created an actual dynasty of a team. We know there was the deflating of footballs, and we know that Belichick is, well, you know, here and there done a little cheating. That said... It doesn't take away from the fact that what Tom Brady did in Florida to go to Tampa to take a last place nothing team that has been in the basement for well over a decade and in one season take them not only into the playoffs but to the Super Bowl and win the crown. You have to tip your hat. This guy is legit. He is one of the greatest of all time in his sport. He is a Babe Ruth, Michael Jordan. This guy is just beyond phenomenal. So we give him his props. And sadly, Kansas City just didn't show up to play. And I was actually pulling for Kansas City, and I like their QB. I think Mahomes has an incredible future in front of him, and I think he has the ability to be one of those incredible quarterbacks that gets back to the Super Bowl multiple times, and I predict he will win multiple Super Bowl rings. I, I predict that for him. But we had to listen to the Lib Loons literally go ballistic the week building up to the Super Bowl that, I can't believe at the start of Black History Month, February, we're talking about a white guy, Tom Brady. Okay? And then, of course... You know, we're getting all of this virtue signaling following the Super Bowl. Bottom line is this. The, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they outplayed Kansas City. There were one or two calls that I looked at that, that went in Tampa's favor, and I thought, eh, I don't know if I agree with that or not. But overall, Kansas City was flat-footed, and sadly, there was nobody Mahomes threw the football to that could catch. It was none of his receivers were, were on at all. And he made some spectacular throws where he's being tackled, thrown out of bounds, and he's just kind of sidearm slinging it like a, like a major league shortstop, and it's hitting the guy in the chest that he wanted it to get it to but couldn't hang on to it. It was, it was phenomenal. I predict great things for him, but let's not take away from what happened and what Tom Brady accomplished, because that was huge. And again, I'm no Brady fan. Now, that said, I won't even talk about the Super Bowl halftime show, because I'd never even heard of that guy, The Weeknd, or whatever they call him. I'd never even heard of him until the start of the halftime show. I watched about 60 seconds of that, and I flipped it over to a rerun of American Restoration and watched them rebuild a Coca-Cola machine, and then I went back and watched the second half of the Super Bowl. That said, uh, some of the commercials were just outright lame, and I do enjoy watching the commercials. Uh, to me, the best commercial of the night by far was the Matthew McConaughey Dorito commercial where he plays, you know, a flat, one-dimensional himself, and he eats one of these Dorito 3D puffed nacho chips, and immediately he becomes his old self. Unfortunately, he's trapped inside the machine. It's hilarious. It's funny. you got to see it. The virtue signal, the, we're going we're gonna to preach at you, aside from the NFL PSAs that we had to endure, and somebody managed to uh, get a camera to Joe Biden and he had no idea really who he was talking to, but hey, it was the Super Bowl. Um, Bruce Springsteen, his commercial for Jeep. There's a chapel in Kansas standing on the exact center of the lower 48. It never closes. All are more than welcome to come meet here in the middle. 
It's no secret. The middle has been a hard place to get to lately. Between red and blue, between servant and citizen, between our freedom and our fear. Yeah, first of all, I wasn't aware that Bruce Springsteen was a cowboy. He's a guy from Jersey, New Jersey. He's just a, a, a New Jersey kid who had a garage rock band that hit it big. And in the 80s, he was doing the 80s version of social commentary. Got it. That's the Bruce Springsteen shtick. Why all of a sudden they're trying to recast him as like a Montana, Kansas, Texas cowboy is beyond me. It was That part of it for me was actually laughable. But the one thing that the Jeep commercial did do, they were trying to, quote, bring us together. And they actually kind of did, but not in the way they were hoping. It wasn't this feel-good moment that brought us together, that we're like, wow, we understand now. We really do need to come to the middle and embrace each other. They brought the left and the right together by universally trashing this commercial because it was awful. You know, you've got the left, they're all upset. What's he doing in white middle America? <laughs> And, and after the insurrection on January 6th, we can never just come together unless there's first a reckoning. Oh, you want your pound of flesh, huh? Even though there really wasn't an insurrection, a riot, or an attack. But I'll get to that in just a few moments. The conservatives went after this commercial because it's like, what does this have to do with the product you're hawking, Jeep? And, you know, we want something like the Super Bowl for some entertainment and some diversion. Can we stop having everything rammed down our throat? Is that what this is going to be? It's bad enough that with the Joe Biden administration, we're not going to see any actual real legislation go through. Everything will be by edict and decree and by executive order. This man has single-handedly destroyed the gas and oil industry in shy of three weeks. And if you think your gas prices are bad now, wait till they turn off all the pipelines and wait till he ends fracking. No, he said he wasn't going to do that. Wait till he ends fracking. Wait till you're paying five, six bucks a gallon for a gallon of gas at the pump. Mm -mm -mm. And with all the rollbacks he's doing and he's going to wipe out the Trump legacy... You just wait till we go back to the Obama-era economy. Even some liberal economists, like some that served in the Clinton administration, they were sounding the alarm over the weekend that when all of these trillions of dollars of all of the stimulus money actually hit our economy, we are going to see inflation like never before. Well, isn't that special? Thank you, Obama. And thank you to those of you that just couldn't stand four more years of the orange man and you voted for Obama. On that level, you're right. We, we, we are nowhere near coming together. Because when the left says, let's have unity, what they mean is conformity. Do exactly as we say and the way we tell you. That's all we want out of you. Which is what has triggered this next farce of an impeachment. And that is exactly what this is. For me, I'm sorry. I do find a sickening entertainment value in it. Because we are going to watch the Democrats grandstand and laud their ethics and their love of Constitution and their love of country, all of which we know is absolute, complete bunk and bullhock. The liberals hate this country, they hate the Constitution, and they hate what it stands for and represents. This is why they have turned it into the ultimate piece of toilet paper in the way they are actually trashing the constitutional system. When they start saying things today like what Donald Trump did on January the 6th was the most grievous attack on our Constitution. Oh, shut up! You vile reprobates don't even know what what, what, what uh, a, a, a violation of the Constitution actually is because you've lived it so long, don't you dare start lecturing us. How dare you? When we have listened to the rhetoric for years and I've already gone through this ad nauseum of all the things that you have said that you would like to do to people on the right, 
Have we forgotten about the college students that would protest when Ann Coulter or Ben Shapiro would show up on a college campus and they were setting fire to buildings and so therefore conservatives couldn't speak on college campuses anymore? Have, have we forgotten about the rioting which took place all summer long and, and it's still going on but the media is not covering it now because that doesn't fit the new Biden narrative? And they talk about they got to root out extremism. But yet they won't define for us what this extremism is. Because the common denominator is simply this. If you voted for Trump, if you're a conservative, if you are still speaking up for what you believe in, if you still think you have freedom of speech, if you still think you have freedom of expression, if you still think that you can talk against things like same-sex marriage, or you can talk against things like uh, gender neutrality or ge cross-gender trans... What, if you think you can do all those things, you are an extremist. That's where we're at. I saw an article today. Snopes has now declared, Snopes.com, they have now declared that if you believe in a young earth slash creation slash Noah's flood, that's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy against real science. It's a cons If you are white, Christian, traditional value, and you vote conservative, ISIS is not the enemy. You are. And the truth is, ISIS never was really the targeted enemy of all of this surveillance state given to us by the Bush administration. So when Liz Cheney says that by her conscience, she had to vote for the impeachment of Donald Trump because of what happened, the attack on the Capitol. Shut up! Wyoming, don't you dare send her back. You are the, your father is a war criminal. George W. Bush is a war criminal. Don't you dare lecture us about what is an attack on the United States. Donald Trump said repeatedly, go peacefully. March peacefully. Let your voices be heard. So this sham, this farce, well, they've asked him to testify. No, he's not going to testify. This thing is so illegitimate, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court will not attend, will not oversee it. That right there needs to tell you this is not constitutional. Now, those of you who actually read the Constitution, understand the Constitution, already know that. I know to a certain degree I'm preaching to the choir. But the way this will be spun this week is by Trump not showing up and, and the Republicans vote, they're voting against the Constitution. And blah, blah. The Democrats are using all of this to crush this man, destroy his legacy, and make sure that no one that's even remotely conservative, don't you ever think about running for anything or we'll crush you too. It is time, beyond time, to start a new hashtag campaign. <gasps> Shall we call it Recall 46? Huh? 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 How about Bring Trump Back? <laughs> now, I know it'll probably get you deplatformed from Twitter. But, you know, sometimes it's just worth it getting kicked off of something that isn't worth being a part of anymore anyway. I'm, I'm trying to get kicked off Twitter. Hadn't happened yet. Make sure that you are following me over on the other channel. That would be rumble.com, rumble.com. Because who knows how long I'll get to continue to do this here. But this is where we're at, people. This is where we're at. And this sham of an impeachment, the only thing I can say about it, as far as some of the sound bites and listening to guys like Rand Paul, who will no doubt get a couple of good shots in, and so will Ted Cruz, its entertainment value will be far better than the so-called halftime show of the Super Bowl. <laughs>